In just a few minutes, Lisa Pathfinder will reach the end of its mission. It will also be the end of an exciting and unforgettable time for everyone here. It's now time to say farewell to Lisa Pathfinder. You, you're dealing with it day in, day out. And even when you go on holiday, you're checking on it. And uh, when you're on the weekends, you're checking on it. So it's, uh, it's probably more like a pet than a family. It's something you have to look after, make sure it doesn't, make sure it's fed, make sure it's watered, make sure it's healthy. Every day uh, I go to work and I check the data to see how things were that night. And that's no longer the case. That will now be stopping. So yes, I'll definitely miss what we're doing. I don't think we invented a special name for this satellite, so, but I once described it as the satellite is following us like a lamb. And that's probably a good comparison because it did exactly what we wanted and it was very quiet. The small spacecraft was designed to test measuring technologies to be used in the future gravitational wave observatory LISA. LISA will be used to detect tiny ripples in the fabric of space-time from interplanetary space. This has been an astonishing success. I mean, we've demonstrated so much of the technology and the, and the concepts and the ideas that we need to do a gravitational wave observatory in space that, you know, there's still some things to do, of course, uh, but the amount of things we've learned and demonstrated gives great confidence in that, that we can do the final observatory. And this is the first uh, free fall mission of ESA. It's the first fundamental physics mission of this kind of level. And it worked. And that's the beauty of it. It worked. And we're delighted. We're not only playing in the upper league of fundamental physics, we're playing in the only league there is. Because there is no other mission like this. Without being arrogant, but I would say it was a little step of historical value, I would say. We, we inaugurated a new field in space science, and I think uh, this will remain. The scientists and flight engineers kept gathering valuable data right up to the last moment. All the instruments were tested to their limits, and all possible sources for disturbances were looked at. On the 9th of April, we did a small maneuver which pushed Lisa Pathfinder the other side of L1 towards the sun. Uh, the maneuver was about six and a half days long with our micropropulsion system because it's not very strong. So it should stay in an orbit about two million kilometers closer to the sun from the Earth for the next 100, 200, 300, 400 years. It's now time for the last command to be sent it will stop the satellite from activating itself again. It's a sense of achievement is very strong, and so I think uh, done, right? That's the word of the day is done, and well done. Okay, so arm and go, and it's done. Farewell, Lisa Pathfinder. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> the timing was wonderful. As Lisa Pathfinder has come to the end of its mission, Lisa's ramping up. So, as we say in Scotland, we have a wake. You don't mourn the death of someone, you celebrate their life. So now we're celebrating the life of Pathfinder in Lisa. The Gravitational Wave Observatory LISA will be made up of three separate spacecraft. The spacecraft will be connected together by laser arms two and a half million kilometers long. It will be the largest instrument ever made by humans. LISA is scheduled to launch in 2034. Then you can listen to black holes, supermassive black holes with millions of solar masses. And we will finally be able to find out how the evolution of galaxies is connected to black holes. <laughs>